on 3R ballistics, we have modern medieval armor. So can we make medieval armor to withstand the forces and energy of rifle power? Now to compete with modern AR-500 level 3 body armor, there are some stipulations and uh, measurements that we wanted to keep within. First of all was weight. These two guys come in at 8 pounds 4 ounces, 8 pounds 10 ounces. Most modern AR-500 steel level 3 body armor comes in right around 8.5 to 9 pounds. We are not going to be able to be as thin, but we are still about 1 inch thick on these. Multi-curve, if you notice, look at all those sexy curves on these guys. And hopefully multiple hit rated. Along with the weight and dimensions, we are also going to stay with the threats. We're going to try to stop uh, everything up to a 308 full metal jacket. We're also going to try 556 full metal jacket, green tip, 308 full metal jacket. Then we have our over NIGA spec 300 wind mag. And finally, to finish it off, 300 wind mag in API. One of those rounds better punch through because we also brought with us our homemade ballistic zombie torso. Now, funny story about this. While we were making this torso, we um, spilled most of the gel outside of the mold. And uh, that ended up leaving us with this little skinny mini here. So if this guy can't take the force or impacts, we did bring our concrete cowboy torso over here and we'll go ahead and use that. But since we have the torso, we're going to put the uh, medieval modern body armor on this guy and see what it can withstand. So these plates are very similar in overall dimensions and weight. They are different internally, obviously. So stick around till the end. We're going to tear these down once we're done shooting them up. Uh, doing a little bit of outcast science merch always available and We will show you how they are different uh, One is different than the other so also I want to point out there is the ballistic torso We'll be about shooting these from about 18 yards away first up. We got 556 full metal jacket We're gonna go upper part of the plate <laughs> Speed 3250. Next we have green tip. Speed 3005 feet per second. Let's go check that out. Clear. We have the 556 full metal jacket right there. We have the M855 green tip right there. And both of them stopped. Our modern medieval armor has stopped these two. We're gonna try a 308 right there. Leave a little space down here for the spicy rounds. Up now we got the 762 by 51, the 308 M80 should be going 2790. 2875. I was completely wrong. Let's go check that out. Clear. And the damage has begun. That is the 308 right there. And what? It did not go through. <laughs> we, we were able to stop it. It did not go through. This little skinny mini ballistics gel. So time to hit it with the big guy. 300 wind mag. We want to get through that thing so we brought out the 300 wind mag. We got some Hornady super performance. This is a 165 grain CX bullet. The CX bullet is a solid copper. This thing is, says it should be going 3260. 
That's a lot of energy, way beyond anything this should be able to handle. So let's see what we get. Woo, 3280, really close. Let's go check it out. Here we go with the 300 Win Mag right there. And oh, we did. We stopped it. But if you look, you would have at least a broken rib. But it did not go through. Dang it. <laughs> okay, we got the API. We're getting through this thing right now. And this is what we got. We're gonna finish it off with the silver tip API, hopefully put on a little bit of show, with the 300 Win Mag. Woo! 34.55. Now that, <laughs> that is some energy. That API, it, uh, wait a second, what? Uh, what uh, just happened here? Guys, uh, we just stopped a 300 Win Mag API. Whoa. What? Okay. You gotta stay for the tear down. This build is amazing. But we have one more plate we gotta test. Okay guys, after that first plate, I don't know what to expect with this one. We're gonna start with the same 556 M193 full metal jacket, 55 grain. Um, for this one, I went ahead and gave him his helmet uh, a little bit of adjacent action. It's not really tied on, so it'll probably fall right off, but uh, let's go ahead. Woo, 3209. I put the full metal jacket right there, the green tip right there. We are about an inch apart. His helmet stayed on, but nothing has gone through. The guy is melting on this scorching day. This one, I have a feeling is gonna be just as durable. On to the 308. 308, right side, we're gonna try for that other sword 2,843 per second out of the M80 Unfortunately we started having some overheating problems with our microphone and cameras so Basically what I'm showing here is the 308 did not go through either. It did break another rib, but uh, we're going to move on to the 300 Win Mag and see what we could do with the solid copper round. Let's see what the 300 Win Mag can do with that Hornady CX bullet. Thing just knocked that helmet off, turned the body armor around and went 33, 66 feet per second. The other camera uh, overheated. It is a hot day today. So walking up, 
this is what we got. The head fell on the ground. This is turned 180 degrees. Um, <laughs> I'll come over here. You could see that damage. That's the 300 wind mag right there. Um, but it did not go through. Like I said, this thing is starting to melt. We are gonna try a 30-06 M2AP instead of those 300 Win Mag API rounds. Those seem to be loaded a little bit hot for me. We saw some pressure signs on the last casing, so we are gonna do the World War II M2AP. So this is the 30-06 M2AP black tip. And basically what I'm explaining here is it's the same similar grain weight projectile just going a little bit slower. Once again we get the helmet to roll off and I want to show here that it was going 28 33 feet per second. So walking up that is a 30-06 M2AP and ho oh, ho 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 so the M2AP right there did not go through um our skinny mini here though has seen better days but i am 100 percent shocked that that thing is still standing kind of all right on to the tear down So now back at the shop, we're going to go ahead and start by tearing down plate one. And what I want to point out is I only used four rivet styles pins to keep this together. And you'll see the last layer besides the sheet metal in the back is unidirectional Kevlar. So this isn't a woven Kevlar fabric, it's a unidirectional and combined with that, I also have the UHMWPE Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene. So as a strike face, I'm using some alumina oxide. Uh, they're basically grain feed tiles uh, for abrasion resistance. And I encapsulated them in a woven aramid fabric. And I put that all together with an elastomer to keep it together. Alternatively, I do have an installation video. If you guys would like to see that, please comment below and I could possibly make another video showing the build process for each of these plates. Speaking of builds, we'll go back to build one here. And as you can see, I used about 40 layers of polyethylene uh, and about 10 layers of unidirectional Kevlar. So in total, this plate was a pretty simple build. I had a strike face which can be construed as part of the sheet metal in front a lot of elastomer and also the alumina oxide tile i wrapped all that in a woven kevlar fabric with more elastomer uh, keeping it together and then behind that i just had the polyethylene and kevlar taped together i didn't press them i didn't do anything fancy i just taped them put the sheet metal behind it and pin them together. Now, obviously there is a method to why we're doing it in this order and I can get to that more if you do want to see how the build process happened. Which brings me to the back face deformation. I do want to note that the back face deformation was 61 millimeters just for that 300 wind mag. So you still would probably not have survived that shot, but for these just being put together plates, they handled all the projectiles very well. Now getting into the specifics as far as how, how deep the projectiles went into the layers. We're about 20 layers into the polyethylene and that's about where the 300 wind mag stopped with the CX Hornady bullet and the api they both stopped about halfway through as you can see there's still a little hole where it looks like the green tip possibly went uh, further in but uh you know the last 10 layers you could see are completely clear of the polyethylene 
and also no other projectiles were further than that. So for this second plate, we had a beefier strike face and I welded the sheet metal together. With all that being said, the backing was actually quite thin. We ended up reusing a level 3A Kevlar plate that uh, is stitched together. And in front of that, I have 10 layers of the same ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. You'll also notice I have sheet metal in between the composite layers and the strike face. Now, I do want to say there is a method to this madness. There is a reason that I have three different types of strike face material. The idea being, you have your strongest and hardest material up front, your ceramic up front, you know, on a scale of one to 10, we'll say an eight. Behind that, we have fiberglass. This is type S2 fiberglass. You know, maybe that hardness is closer to a five, five and a half. Behind that, we have the sheet metal, which is something closer to, we'll say a two and a half, three. Each material breaking up and slowing down the projectile before it hits the composite layer, which we want to catch the projectile. And as you saw, it worked as designed and we were able to stop every projectile we threw at it. So lastly, I want to add that this second plate was a little bit more complex in the thought process and how it was accomplished. It also weighed a little bit more. Uh, not only did it have less surface area, but it also was heavier just overall in weight. So that definitely had to do with the fiberglass being added. Uh, it didn't help. And then the additional piece of sheet metal. And here you can see what the actual tiles look like after I've ripped open the Kevlar and taken them away from the elastomer. Also to be noted, this plate had less deformation than the first plate, and I'm sure that attributed to the stronger strike face. Uh, if you take pound for pound what we had in the back, we had less composite material and more strike face, strike face on the second plate. So guys, if you're still here, I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, let me know if you wanna see the build process of this. And until the next one.